Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto and in this presentation I'm going to explain about actuators that we commonly use in IoT applications. So this is the outline of our presentation. We are going to introduce the passive buzzer and the sound generation. Also we, we are going to talk about displays, the LCD and OLED displays and RGB LED strips. Then we're going to move to motors, so we're going to explain about DC motors, servo motors and stepper motors. And then we're going to talk about control, two different types of controls, the on-off control and the PAD control. So let's start with the uh, passive buzzer. It's a, uh, it's a special kind of material, it's a piezoelectric layer that makes the membrane uh, vibrate uh, when we apply a current to it. So if we apply a PWM signal uh, with a specific frequency, this generates a vibration which is converted into a sound at that specific frequency. And uh, with this kind of devices we can easily generate tones uh, or notes and uh, with a specific uh, frequency and duration. And um, here you can see also the KY006, it's a module typically used in many of our projects that uh, we can use it for uh, generating sound. Do not uh, confuse with an active buzzer because the active buzzer you cannot control the frequency, okay? So here we can control the frequency by generating this PWM signal, but with the active buzzer it just simply generates uh, a beep and we cannot control the frequency of that beep. So then as an alternative we have a sound player which is a DF player mini. It's a very cheap and tiny uh, uh, circuit, we can use, uh, for, uh, use it for reproducing mp3, WAV files and, and so, and it includes a, a car reader, SD car reader, and we can store their files with our sounds and uh, with our microcontroller just simply control which files we would like to reproduce, uh, play, stop, pause and so on. It's a very interesting option if you want to generate uh, music or specific voice commands or something like that. Then we have the LCD uh, display, it's a liquid crystal display. It's a very cost-effective way to print test uh, uh, out of our microcontroller. So basically these kind of uh, displays they have two lines and they, they are able to print up to 16 characters uh, per line. Uh, they have a parallel interface but there are some circuits like you can see here in, in, the, in the figure that they have this I2C parallel interface so we can uh, save some uh, lines in our microcontroller. Also it's uh, quite common nowadays to use OLED displays, they are quite cheap too and uh, they are uh, based on organic uh, leads and uh, this um, allow us to specifically address each of the leads and um, one of the main advantages is that they do not require a backlight so they have in general better contrast and they have very, uh, a very low power consumption. These kind of uh, uh, displays usually uh, they are provided in, in two different versions so they have the I2C or the SPI interfaces and here you can see different kind of uh, OLED displays in which there are different sizes and, um, and resolutions. Also the, the color LEDs, the RGB LED strips, it's a um, very um, interesting option if you want to provide different kind of uh, illumination uh, settings for your project. They are based on, on the WS2812B chip and uh, they are provided as a strip so they are connected one after another and they can be up to 5 meters long. And the main advantage is that just they can be just simply controlled with one uh, digital pin. So you, with one digital pin you can basically generate a lot of uh, colors uh, with your LED strip. Then if we move into motors, we have the DC motor, this is the, the most standard motor. Uh, basically we use this motor to regulate the speed so we can apply uh, different voltages so the speed varies accordingly. Actually what we need is to provide a current and we, we can regulate torque but in most of our uh, homemade projects we, we use these uh, motors just simply for regulating speed. And uh, one interesting thing is that because they consume quite a lot of current 
we can't provide uh, that current directly from a, a, a pin from our microcontroller, we need a driver. So basically we need uh, what, what it's known as a H bridge or a half H bridge to, uh, to allow uh, um, the, 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 the microcontroller to control how the, the current uh, drives into the motor. So uh, also we have the servos, they are specialized kind of DC motors because uh, basically what a, servo, what a servo includes is a DC motor but also includes some gears and also the necessary electronic and interface and a potentiometer. The difference with respect to a DC motor is that uh, the servo is a uh, position control so we can easily control the position of uh, the axis of our motor and it's quite a, a standardized. Okay? The, the main drawback is the accuracy is not very good in general. Okay? The, they are cheap and, um, yeah, and uh, this is uh, something we have to deal with but in general will be more than enough for many of the applications and they are very easily to control with a kind of PW signal, it's called PPM signal and it's also a periodic signal in which we modulate the width of a specific um, on period so we can control the, the position of the servo. Then we have the stepper motors, they, they are motors controlled with magnets, they, the axis basically can be controlled by activating and deactivating a sequence of magnets and what we do with this kind of motors is to generate steps. So each step it's just one single rotation of the motor and we can count how many steps we want to generate and this will generate a square signal with the steps and the motor will respond accordingly to that. One of the main drawbacks in general is that they have a small torque and they work in open loop, means that if we require too much torque we might, might uh, miss the step so we might think that we have moved to a specific position but this is not uh, the case. This, is, this happens typically on, on 3D printers when, get, uh, when, the, when they get stuck. The main advantage is that they can be easily controlled with digital signals. Then if we move into the control uh, area, we basically have in most of uh, the kind of projects that we are going to work with two different kind of controls. The on-off control is a special kind of control in which uh, the, the actuation signal it's on during a certain period and off during the other center period and uh, they, we, in here we can use uh, for instance relays to control a specific uh, uh, devices like uh, a LED lamp or a fan and, uh, or a water pump for instance too or we can use for instance uh, a solenoid too to control um, how to push a specific um, element. So, there are different kind of applications that uh, we can use with, within this uh, on-off control. Is the simplest one, like light control, temperature control, or the water pump in our uh, in greenhouse project, for instance. The main drawback is that if the signal, so we have usually a threshold. So if the signal is above the threshold, then we activate the on, and if it's below the threshold, then we act, we, we deactivate the signal. But if it's just right in the middle, this signal could be switching continuously so we can use a high thirty um, version of this uh, control which in general is much better. And finally uh, we have the PID control. This is very interesting when we want to regulate uh, easily our, our processes in which we have some kind of analog input measurement and uh, the main advantage of this PAD control is that it's quite intuitive to, uh, to tune, so we have three parameters, basically three, three gains, in which we regulate the proportional error between our reference signal, that's the setting value, value that we want to achieve, and our measured signal. So this is the, the proportional component, but we also have the integral component which is somehow um, a memory, so it's looking into the past and, and remembers how the error was and we also have the derivative component which is somehow looking into the future and it's predicting so, uh, how the uh, signal error will behave. So within this control we can have for instance uh, light control in which we can just simply 
dim the light with the appropriate electronics, as you can see here, the AC uh, light dimmer, for instance, and using an uh, LDR, or we can regulate the temperature with much more accuracy or control the position of a DC motor with a, with a, a full uh, H bridge and an encoder, for instance, too. Okay, so just like a summary in this presentation, I have presented some of the or the, the common uh, actuators that we use in IoT applications. Thank you very much and I hope to see you on my next presentation.